More hospitals are setting up tents outside to manage the influx of COVID-19 patients at their emergency departments. Waiting times of six to seven years for BTO flats? Well, that's not the case according to Minister Desmond Lee. And a round of applause in Parliament honouring Team Singapore athletes. You're watching The Big Story. I'm Harianto Diman. Now remember to subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you never miss a single episode. More hospitals are setting up tents and temporary structures outside their buildings to deal with the continuing flood of COVID-19 patients heading to emergency departments. Functions of these holding areas vary. For instance, since last Friday, Kutikpuat Hospital has been receiving COVID-19 patients at temporary areas set up at Ishun Community Hospital, where they can get medical care while waiting to be transferred to a community care or treatment facility. To alleviate the burden on hospitals, authorities have announced that 3,700 beds in nine COVID-19 treatment facilities would be ready by the end of the month. As at yesterday, 1,355 COVID-19 patients were warded in hospitals. Among them, 226 needed oxygen support and 35 were in ICU. Of those who have fallen very ill, 221 are seniors above 60. The Health Ministry reported 2,475 new cases last night, comprising 1,859 in the community, 601 from the dorms and 15 imported. Eight more deaths were reported, bringing the total to 121. According to the Health and Manpower Ministry's most issues arising from poor living conditions at the COVID-19 community care facility in Amokyo had been resolved several weeks before a Facebook post slammed the quote, dire conditions there. Both ministries recently inspected the facility, finding that the rooms had basic amenities and were generally clean at the time of inspection. On Saturday, a Facebook user named Min Chan described the meagre conditions in the facility. Among other things, she said the lack of room doors meant the occupants got wet during heavy thunderstorms. The Straits Times has contacted her for comments. Meanwhile, the ministries said a ground operations team is reviewing some of the issues and has taken immediate action. Acting residents are encouraged to give feedback through existing channels, like through the managing agents of the facilities. Meanwhile, my colleague Cheryl Tan found out that several private clinics here have been seeing a demand for Sinovac and Sinopharm vaccines as booster shots for reasons including preference for traditional non-mRNA vaccines. This comes as Singapore continues to see rising COVID-19 cases and starting yesterday, those between 50 and 59 years old can get their boosters. The Expert Committee on COVID-19 Vaccination is still studying the possibility of mixing vaccines for the booster dose. Joining me now is Dr. Alvin Neo. He's the Head of Clinical Projects at Northeast Medical Group. His clinic has been receiving calls about getting non-mRNA boosters. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Doctor, what are some of your patients' reasons for wanting non-mRNA boosters? Thank you for inviting me. So uh, I think some of the, there are a couple of reasons that uh, we have encountered or, or rather some of the reasons that, have, uh, that patients have come forth to tell us about. So I think firstly, being an inactivated vaccination, the Sinopharm vaccination, the public impression is that it is safer as it has been produced with more traditional vaccine technology. Secondly, there has also been lesser reported severe side effects with mm. the inactivated vaccinations such as anaphylaxis or myocarditis as compared with the mRNA vaccinations. Although I must qualify uh, that currently all the vaccinations currently uh, available in Singapore are very safe in the sense that the incidence of severe side effects with all the vaccinations currently available have been very low. Thirdly, I think there is also the theoretical benefit of broader coverage if we mix vaccinations, even though this has not been clearly proven in clinical studies currently. 
Doctor, I understand that Northeast Medical offers Sinopharm for primary doses, but not as a booster. Why not, Doctor? So, so currently, the, the Ministry of Health of Singapore has not officially approved the use of Sinopharm vaccination as a booster. mRNA vaccinations are still currently recommended by MOH as boosters for people above 50, and as well as for individuals who are in, immunocompromised. So I believe this is because the current evidence still shows that the mRNA vaccinations have a higher efficacy and protection rate against the COVID-19 virus. Another point to note is that if one does go for a Sinopharm booster vaccination, uh, this individual will then not be eligible for the Vaccine Injury Financial Assistance Plan or VIFAT that is being offered by the government currently. Separately, doctor, it was reported last night that a 65-year-old woman was hospitalised after taking ivermectin on the urging of her friends to protect herself from COVID-19. What is ivermectin and is it readily available here? I think that that is unfortunate. So ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug that is typically used for worm infections. So it has not been proven to treat COVID-19 neither has it been proven to prevent one from getting COVID-19. So some of the severe side effects that one may experience from taking ivermectin include developing a fever, severe joint pains, lymph node swellings or generalized weakness. So in terms of the availability of ivermectin, it is available in Singapore, but it is a prescription item and it actually cannot be procured over the counter, say in a pharmacy like a like Guardian or other retail pharmacies. Well, thank you so much for your perspectives, Dr. Neo. I've been speaking with Dr. Alvin Neo, Head of Clinical Projects at Northeast Medical Group. My colleague Cheryl Tan has been speaking to other clinics as well. Look out for her story at straightstimes.com or in the papers tomorrow. Most BTO flat buyers can expect to move in between four and five years after booking their flats, even taking into account delays brought about by the pandemic and barring further unexpected developments. National Development Minister Desmond Lee giving this reassurance in Parliament today in light of growing concerns over BTO project delays. Existing home buyers may be concerned about further delays to ongoing projects given the impact of COVID-19 on the construction industry. Some have said that waiting times have risen to six to seven years. That is not the case. The average waiting time for ongoing BTO projects, including delays brought about by the pandemic, has remained between four to five years. Thus far, government's support and assistance measures have helped to keep the pandemic-induced delays to our BTO projects to a year or less except for one project which has already experienced project difficulties unrelated to the pandemic. Five-time Paralympic gold medalist Yip Bin Siu will be given the inaugural President's Award for Inspiring Achievement, which will recognise Singaporeans who've overcome personal adversity and led inspiring lives. Addressing Yip herself, who attended today's parliament sitting, Culture, Community and Youth Minister Edwin Tong said that not only has she brought pride to Singapore on the world sporting stage, but she also served as a nominated MP from 2018 to 2020 and advocated on issues like sports and inclusion. She's also spoken out against campus sexual violence and workplace harassment. Ping Siu, your trophy cabinet must be packed by now. But I hope and I think you can find space for one more way in which we can honour and recognise you. Your innate quality to inspire Singaporeans, your consistency in sporting achievement at the absolutely highest level, your contributions in so many areas away from sport, and your own quiet, unassuming personality, which I know hides a deep personal conviction to be a positive change maker. Each already amazing in his own right, and I'm sure members will agree with me. But taken together, you and your achievements have really served to unite us as Singaporeans and inspire us deeply. This award will recognise Singaporeans who have overcome personal adversity and led inspiring lives. Through their outstanding and wide-ranging achievements and contributions to society, they are role models who instil a sense of national pride in fellow Singaporeans. 
This prestigious award will be conferred by the President to deserving recipients who will meet its highest qualifying criteria. It will be presented to Singaporeans with fitting achievements and may not be given out every year. Ping Siu has demonstrated these exceptional qualities. She has stared adversity in its face, time and time again, overcame it. She is truly an inspiration to Singaporeans and it is only appropriate that she will now become the inaugural recipient of this award. This part of Mr Tong's motion to honour Team Singapore athletes who competed at the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. He also responded to questions on reducing the disparity in cash rewards for able-bodied athletes and para-athletes, saying the Singapore National Paralympic Council is working on increasing the cash payouts for para-athletes at major games. The award amounts offered under both schemes are raised and determined by the SNOC and SNPC respectively along with their sponsors. Individually, the awards under each of the schemes are tiered based on the standard, the size and the feel of competition of each major games. In other words, Olympics, Commonwealth Games, Asian Games, Sea Games. The difference in cash quantums does not reflect how government values our para-athletes via our able-bodied athletes. In our eyes, they are all Team Singapore athletes and each athlete, able or disabled, has his or her own intrinsic value, which we value, recognise and appreciate. SNPC is working on enhancing the cash awards for para-athletes in major games. They have already had discussions with a few entities to do so. And I've also discussed these efforts with President of SNPC, Prof Tioko, on several occasions and will continue to support their engagement with corporate entities and private funders towards this objective. SNPC will announce the outcome of their efforts in due course. Giving Olympians and Paralympians the same cash payout for a gold medal is a long-standing issue. With Moise Straits Times' sports correspondent, Zali Abdul Aziz, Saz, you have spoken to Pinsu about this before. A Paralympian who wins gold gets $200,000. Now, that's one-fifth of the $1 million reward for a winning Olympian. What needs to happen, Saz, in order to achieve parity for these monetary incentives? Yeah, so in addressing this disparity, we have to uh, first understand the context of these awards. The Major Games Award Program uh, or MEP and Athletes Achievements Awards or AAA for para-athletes are private award schemes managed by you know, national Olympic and Paralympic bodies uh, respectively. Uh, the tote board is primary sponsor for both programs, which also feature contributions from the private sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and this to where... Uh, this is where, to my understanding, is where the, the disparity lies. The reality is that the Olympic garners more eyeballs than the Paralympics. Uh, and this is one of the uh, things that goes into the consideration for some of these private sector companies that are thinking about throwing their weight uh, and their money behind the award. Uh, having said that, uh, Minister Edwin Tong said in Parliament today that, that you know, the Singapore National Paralympic Council uh, has already held discussions with a few entities and that MCCY uh, would continue to support their engagement with corporate entities uh, you know, as they try and push uh, to close that gap in the disparity. Sans, help us understand, how does Singapore compare with other countries on the giving out of cash rewards to gold medalists at the Olympics and Paralympics? Well, if you're talking about the quantum itself, uh, Singapore is actually you know, one of the most generous, if not the most generous uh, nations uh, in the world. Uh, our countries that have uh, publicly declared their cash rewards for Olympic and Paralympic athletes, uh, we offer the highest amount uh, for, uh, for Olympic gold which is, uh, as, as you mentioned, $1 million. Uh, dollars. Uh, but because of uh, the disparity between the Olympic and Paralympic gold, our neighbours across the causeway in Malaysia uh, actually award more for a Paralympic gold. Uh, they also have a $1 million, uh, ringgit reward for Olympians and, and they announced parity for an Olympic and Paralympic medal in 2016, meaning a Paralympic gold medalist now earns just about over 320000 Singapore dollars. Uh, plus, they have a monthly pension of about 5,000 ringgit per month. So, uh, yeah, while, while there are a handful of nations like Malaysia who have announced uh, equal rewards in recent years, you know, US and Australia among them, uh, many others have not. Uh, and as we mentioned, there are many factors behind them. Thank you for your inputs, Saz. That was my colleague at The Straits Times, sports correspondent, Sazali Abdul Aziz.
Wrapping up today's other headlines, Facebook has blamed what it calls a faulty configuration change for the six-hour outage across its platforms including WhatsApp and Instagram. Affecting some 3.5 billion customers, it was the largest ever outage tracked by Down Detector. During the downtime, users converged on other apps and the moment wasn't lost on Twitter which posted, Hello literally everyone. Others were sharing memes about the outage, including this one, <laughs> my favourite, by Usain Bolt asking, who did this? International travel demand is expected to double next year, reaching 44% of 2019's pre-pandemic levels. After a tough couple of years for the sector, the International Air Transport Association says there's little evidence to support current border restrictions. Recovery is expected to be led by countries which have taken steps to open to vaccinated travellers. And William Shatner is set to become the first Star Trek actor to reach the final frontier. The 90-year-old who played Captain Kirk is flying to space on October 12 aboard the Blue Origin capsule. Like his character, Shatner will boldly go where no man, I mean actor, has gone before. For more news and videos, visit straightstimes.com and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the red button below. Once again, I'm Hari Antodiman. I'll see you tomorrow for more stories on The Big Story.